This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Improving the overall experience at healthcare institutions across the country is the main objective of the two-day workshop underway at the St. Joseph's Parish Center here in New Providence. The pilot workshop by the Ministry of Health and the Public Hospitals Authority seeks to improve the overall efficiency of healthcare throughout the country, primarily in advance of the National Health Insurance Scheme. Carla Palmer reports. Dr. Kalei Philippe is among leading physicians and nurses committed to fixing whatever is broken within the healthcare system. We've identified that there is an increase in readmissions of patients. There's also a high rate of patient dissatisfaction with the current healthcare system. This group of which Dr. Philippe is the chair is focusing specifically on improving the discharge planning process at public healthcare facilities. Following a reported baseline study at each institution, Dr. Philippe disclosed the results. The main complaints um, um, in terms of discharge process was for the physicians that the form was too long. For the patients, they wanted more information in regards to their disease and their management, their self-care management. Going into the workshop, Dr. Philippe and her team have already formalized a strategy. The answer, they feel, is implementing an integrated healthcare system emphasizing teamwork, where the right information is disseminated to the right people at the right time. The recommendations going forward is to implement a discharge planning portfolio of forms until we get to our um, integrated IT system so that once a patient moves into hospital, they're at the clinic, they're at a private or public clinic, we can track the progress of their health care throughout the system. Chief Medical Officer at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Glenn Benaby, says quality care for residents nationwide is not only the ultimate objective, but is essential. He says a state-of-the-art health care facility is nothing if it lacks human resources. But the center doesn't matter too much if it lacks the human resources and patient care. And so we come together now to put meat on the bones, to put flesh on the bones, to improve our healthcare system throughout the archipelago of islands and to ensure that the healthcare system is patient-centered and community-based and it's in keeping with the model that is being put forward by our authorities partners, the medical home concept. Healthcare professionals say they are committed to not only bring a greater appreciation of the medical role, but improved service to the communities they serve. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez gave a communication in Parliament yesterday evening outlining plans to extend hours to a number of government clinics in New Providence and Grand Bahama. He believes the extended hours will not only lessen the load of non-emergency cases at Princess Margaret Hospital and Rand Memorial, but will also provide for better management of non-communicable diseases. The Health Minister says the extended hours have already begun and they are seeing positive results. We now know from the hours we have extended in Grand Bahama, family medicine is having an impact as we are already seeing a noticeable decline in the number of persons visiting our accident and emergency department in Freeport. Our expectation is that extension of clinic hours at the Agape House Clinic in New Providence will have the same effect. Elizabeth Estates and Fleming Street Clinics will open for service from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m while health care services at South Beach and Flamingo Gardens will be extended to 12 midnight. In this vein, Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to announce that effective on the 28th of September 2015, the Flamingo Gardens, Fleming Street and South Beach clinics will open for service from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight. Also from the House, the Public Accounts Committee continued its probe today into the affairs of urban renewal and its small homes repair program. The committee heard from co-chair Algernon Allen today. The investigation comes following a report by Auditor General Terence Bastian claiming there was no competitive bidding process. The auditor's report also claimed that 11 contractors were paid $171,000 for work that was not complete or not done. Following the morning hearing, PAC Chairman Hubert Chipman said, he was surprised to discover that a lot of money is channeled through urban renewal, 
which the co-chairs have no responsibility for. What we found this morning is our, the Urban Renewal Commission is so disjointed uh, in terms of who's in charge of what, who pays what, the Ministry of um, Pub, uh, Works and Public de Urban Development is very intricate as far as urban renewal. Th a lot of the things are passed through urban renewal. Uh, the co-chairs has no responsibility for Grand Bahama, Cat Island or Elutra. Uh, their um, authority only goes up to $10,000. What we also found very interesting this morning was the foundation. The foundation actually sits outside of Urban Renewal, um, even though they raise funds in the name of uh, the Urban Renewal Foundation. Chipman said the committee also discovered that the Urban Renewal Foundation raises money and passes it on to Urban Renewal. He noted that under the Financial Audit and Accounting Act, the foundation may have to account for those funds. And apart from a poor filing system, Chipman said Urban Renewal has no legal status and is operating under the purview of the Cabinet of the Bahamas. He noted that more witnesses may have to be called or recalled to answer those questions that Mr. Allen could not, and then to determine the involvement of the Ministry of Works and Urban Development. Meantime, Urban Renewal co-chair Algernon Allen said he is satisfied that all money spent by Urban Renewal were spent appropriately. We know from our perspective of the commission, as co-chairs certainly, that all money spent by us in seeking to uh, further the objectives, the aims of urban renewal, was spent appropriately. And so whatever else may have been done is outside of our purview, but monies which were directed by the co-chairs, by the commission, were done appropriately. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain. The Bahamas was among 10 Caribbean nations awarded for its foreign direct investment strategy and cost effectiveness. The awards were presented at the Caribbean Investment Summit, or CIS, by the Financial Times FDI magazine in London, England. Minister of Finance, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie delivered the keynote address at the inaugural investment summit and told conference delegates that the Caribbean recovered well from the 2008-2009 financial crisis with significant opportunities in renewable energy and tourism. In other business news, for the second year in a row, Harborside Resort at Atlantis has been named TripAdvisor's Family Vacation Critic Favorite Destination. This award comes as no surprise as Harborside Resort officials enjoy a history of excellence as evidenced by its long list of awards from TripAdvisor and Interval International. Resort officials credit sound and strong leadership, a dedicated and consistent effort, and the passionate commitment of employees for the accomplishment. To achieve this designation, a hotel must receive a rating of 4 plus from the editorial staff and be at least 75% recommended by family reviewers receiving a 4 plus review rating. And in international business news, Doritos announced a new campaign that will offer chips in every color of the rainbow. The chip company will partner with it gets better project that will feature rainbow colored chips in celebration and support of the LGBT community. CNN Money is reporting that the Doritos Rainbows packages will only be available online for a limited time and in order to get a bag, customers must pledge $10 to It Gets Better project. The chips will be available come September 20th. That was your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jaminita Swain. You've heard the saying, health is wealth. Well, it was just fitting that members of the gold team, the great gold team that is here at the Broadcasting Corporation, were the ones to convey that message and share it with colleagues. They held a health fair on the corporation's ground today with health experts like tab proprietor Henry Butler touting the benefits of electric pulse treatment and Olympic and NCAA champion Andretti Bain, all of them encouraging everyone to stay fit and active. What we're doing, we're sending electrical pulses in the water. And what is known as activating or stimulating the 7,200 nerve endings in the feet. The feet, when you stimulate the nerves in the feet, the goal of the treatment is to balance the body and relax the body. In today's world, with being on your feet countless hours, you build up a lot of blockage and tension in the feet. 
So the treatment helps to relax not just the feet, but the entire body. Pretty much what we try to do is teach persons how to portion their foods, first and foremost, make the correct food choices, um, you know, how to get serious about losing weight or being healthier. Um, we give advice and, and consultation on nutrition, on recommended supplements, just to pretty much help you achieve whatever your health and fitness goals are. You're not going to say anything smart? No. The goal team is great. Do you want to say that? Nope. So you want to say any other team is not great? No. Speechless. Great. Exuma, an island of beauty. It's considered more than for a family island, and perhaps having its own radio station is one of the factors which give it that distinction. Here's tonight's BTC Island Connection. Right now we have some very special surprise visitors with us. 98.3, The Breeze. It's the pulse of the Exuma community. So this is it, White. Yep. This is um, where Gigi does make all the magic happen. Yeah. Dwight Hart is the proprietor and a pioneer in private radio operation in the Family Islands. On the day that we visited, his midday disc jockey Gigi was at the controls as BTC's Exuma manager Sophia Hart Roll made a big announcement. Looking forward to having IPT, IPT be tested here in Exuma very soon, mm -hmm. and um, I know a lot of persons are looking forward to that service. So. With great anticipation, we expect to have IPTV in Exuma very soon. But while they await that introduction, the breeze continues to keep the island connected with the aid of BTC. Every, every corner I turn, I see BTC something, BTC today. BTC is, is overall doing what it's supposed to do. Um, they provide, uh, here in Exuma, for example, we've got internet. Uh, we're the only internet provider. We've got um, a cell service, obviously, and, um, and a land service. Uh, and so, um, you know, prior to them coming on, and particularly with the cell service, I mean, just think about it, um, it was a challenge for people to, to be able to communicate. And, uh, you know, now that we have that service, um, and with the upgrading of the service, the 4G service that's available um, throughout most of the islands now, um, they're doing a good job of that. BTC has also helped the Exuma Regatta set sail year after year, helping buoy community relations and income. You know, it helps to these um, regattas and homecoming. Homecomings are very, very important to the communities um, in which they have. Uh, people look forward to it. Um, they bring a good financial um, input to those communities for the for the period um, that they're there. Uh, people come home. Mm -hmm. A lot of visitors come back. Uh, residents who've been um, off for a while, and every year we've seen even at Roville. It's growing bigger and bigger. We have more and more people coming in. It's a relationship that's pure harmony. 98.3 The Breeze and BTC every day. Keishla Adderley for the BTC Island Connection.